Yeah. Right. I said I was going to work on the uh, Arduino for the SSM to CAN bus converter during the week, but I don't have space to do it. The space I'm normally working at is taking up with Christmas stuff, so started working on the rear brakes. I uh, pulled the wheel off, obviously, and then the, the rotor off, and wanted to, uh, and the caliper had been off for a while. I wanted to get the backing plate off. Um, I wanted to get off in one piece and use it as a template, and that way I could put it back if I ever uh, decided I didn't like these new brakes or they weren't working well. But uh, the problem is the, the rear spindle I've got, the, uh, the backing plate sits behind the bearing, so you've got to press the bearing out just to remove the backing plate. And I decided I didn't want to do that, so I took a plasma torch to it. That's one of the cuts looks so ugly. But it's off. So now I'm using some nice thick cardboard to uh, mock up my new new bracket. So uh, I'm gonna split it in half. Uh, two bolts off the bottom are gonna come hold the bottom part of the caliper, and two off the top are gonna come hold the top half because I can't have one solid plate unless I want to press the bearing on and off um, every time I want to work on the bracket. So we're not going to do that. We're going to split it in half, one on top, one on bottom. One to grab each ear. Top ear, bottom ear, top two bolts, bottom two bolts. And then if I feel the need to, I may uh, make a little piece that, that ties them together for some structural rigidity uh, via bolts. So uh, that, that's it for right now, this little clip. I'll certainly uh, gonna try and get all the making of this bracket into one video. So uh, we'll clip this together, but yeah. It's cardboard. And I gotta put the caliper, I mean the rotor back on and clamp this in place and uh, mark where I want the hole to be and get the shape of my bracket. All right, that said I was gonna work on the uh, Arduino for the SSM to CAN bus converter during the week, but I don't have space to do it. The space I'm normally working at is taking up with Christmas stuff, so started working on the rear brakes. I uh, pulled the wheel off, obviously, and then the, the rotor off, and wanted to, uh, and the caliper had been off for a while. I wanted to get the backing plate off. Um, I wanted to get off in one piece and use it as a template, and that way I could put it back if I ever uh, decided I didn't like these new brakes or they weren't working well. But uh, the problem is the, the rear spindle I've got, the, uh, the backing plate sits behind the bearing. So you've got to press the bearing out just to remove the backing plate. And I decided I didn't want to do that, so I took a plasma torch to it. That's one of the cuts looks so ugly, but it's off. So now I'm using some nice thick cardboard to uh, mock up my new new bracket. So uh, I'm going to split it in half. Uh, two bolts off the bottom are going to come hold the bottom part of the caliper and two off the top are going to come hold the top half because I can't have one solid plate unless I want to press the bearing on and off um, every time I want to work on the bracket. So we're not going to do that. We're going to split it in half. One on top, one on bottom. One to grab each ear. Top ear, bottom ear. Top two bolts, bottom two bolts. And then if I feel the need to, I may uh, make a little piece that, that ties them together for some structural rigidity uh, via bolts. So uh, that, that's it for right now, this little clip. I'll certainly uh, gonna try and get all the making of this bracket into one video. So uh, we'll clip this together, but yeah, it's cardboard. I gotta put the caliper, I mean the rotor back on and clamp this in place and uh, mark where I want the hole to be and get the shape of my bracket. Back to working on the brakes today. I uh, had started with the cardboard template and it was so flimsy you couldn't do much with it because of the shape. So I did manage to get it to a plywood template. And this is what this looks like. It's designed to pick up three of the four bolts that held the old backing plate on. I had originally designed it as a, uh, a two-piece, one bracket that grabs the top ear and one back bracket that grabs the bottom ear, but uh, I wound up with so much curvature, um, it, it just looked funny because uh, basically this ear 
still connected to those bottom two, and so you end up with one huge bracket and one small bracket. And I didn't see where it would be any stronger, so I just made it one bracket, which I thought would be the strongest. Um, I couldn't get the exact holes on the top where the caliper melts because it melts so deep. Um, and have to weld a, uh, a, a, a spacer, a, a bushing or something on there. Um, so now I've got it transferred to metal. And it's bolted on there. Um, you know, my metal skills just aren't that great. I mean, there's guys who could freehand cut this and put it on a belt sander and it looks CNC machine. I'm not one of them. You can tell I cut this by hand and cleaned it up on a belt sander. It still looks ugly even after I cleaned it up. But, uh, certainly get the job done. It's a quarter inch steel. Um, I'm going to have some bushing to stick off the back here to uh, space out the caliper and uh, I'll probably weld a gusset in off of the uh, uh, a triangle coming off of the bushing down to the plate so that it can't twist too much. So uh, yeah, try and get some uh, bushings welded on and get the holes drilled and get it mocked up and uh, we'll make another clip and put them all together. So sometimes you have a brain fart. And sometimes it's a pretty big one that lasts for a couple of days. I, uh, I've spent like literally three days, not three full days, one full day and a couple of evenings. So probably like 10, 12 hours making this little bracket right here to uh, hold this caliper on. And when I went and brought, bought some brake pads the other day to make sure that I had the spacing right, I realized that uh, the brake pads don't hold themselves in here and that this isn't the full caliper. There's actually a bracket that this goes into that slides in and out. And this doesn't bolt to the car at all. The caliper bracket bolts to the car. So that means that that bracket right there is completely the wrong shape. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to salvage any of it all or not because this is the caliper bracket. And uh, I went, and get, went to the pick and pull this morning which is always an adventure. You know, I went over there all prepared to pull off of a uh, an import car. I had all my metric tools with me and I got the wheel off, I got the caliper out of the way and got ready to take the caliper bolt off and reached around behind there and that's what I felt. A 14 millimeter triple square socket, which no, I did not own one of. And even in a really big city like Houston, there only appeared to be one in the entire city that I could find, and I had to drive all the way across town to get it. So, a quick trip to the pick and pull for two caliper brackets turned into a half-day adventure and uh, a shopping trip for an exotic tool because the Germans just can't leave well enough alone. No reason that bolt couldn't have been a hex head bolt. So now I've got to get this bracket mounted right here um, instead of way out there so we're fixing to take this apart pull that bracket we got on there throw it in the scrap bin and start working on a new bracket to hold this thing okay uh trying to get this on here and immediately running into some issues uh there's a little let's see if i can show it a little metal bracket right there that helps hold the brake pads in and the clearance is so tight between the rotor and the caliper bracket uh, is so tight that it won't go in with that bracket. I pop that bracket off and it'll go in. These would be really tight clearance here. I guess the rotors on the Subaru were just a little bit thicker than the Volkswagen that I pulled this off of. So uh, I'm going to take that tab off. Just a little tin snip to take that off. And then maybe just take a, a flat file and, and rub just a half a millimeter off of that. Give me a little more clearance. And then brakes will uh, sit right on there real nice and snug. All right, I've got the uh, brake pads in the bracket. I've got the bracket, uh, and, and I clamped it to the clamp the brake pads to the rotor, and then uh, slid the bracket around the, the brake pads that holds it in place. And uh, that's my old bracket that was in there. I trimmed it down so I can get that bolt there, but I ain't got enough meat down there for the other bolt, so I'm gonna have to make this bracket from scratch all over. But um, if I put it right here, it'll be a pretty small bracket. A lot less metal than I had last time. Um, and then on the other side, it will sit. 
Uh, right there, right about 9.30, 10 o'clock. They look pretty good right there. So, so that's what I'm going to do. Start on the new bracket. Yeah, that will hold my caliper bracket on. I marked it top back. There's where one goes. And there's where the other hole bolts. Um, I'll take this bracket. how it'll mount just like that. Don't need it focus. Doesn't want to focus. Turn the phone upside down. Yeah, that's a little better. Not really. I'm gonna reshoot this video. Well it's taken two weeks but I finally have a caliper mounted on the rear wheel. Um I still gotta do a little clearancing. It's really tight right there. And so it's it's not uh it's not spinning freely. Also, where I welded my nuts on the back of my backing plate, rubs just a tiny bit right there and down there. So I will uh, have to, to grind off the, the corner of the nut, but it's welded on, so that's okay. Um, pad sit in there really nice. Nice and even with the edge of the rotor. Uh, so, throw the these are actually just caliper brackets. We'll put the calipers up on there next and uh, show you how that looks. So still have not made any additional progress on the brakes. I went to put the caliper on, bolt it and make sure everything was fine the other day. And it, uh, it just doesn't fit. It's a little too snug. I already knew that the uh, Subaru caliper or rotor, excuse me, was a little bit thicker than the Volkswagen. Uh, because I had to clearance the edges of my caliper bracket to get it to slide on. Uh, but it turns out it's so tight that uh, the caliper, even though I've got it pushed all the way in, I even bought a brake servicing kit to make sure it was depressed all the way. It just barely won't slide over there. So um, I'm either going to have to... I, I can't get the Volkswagen rotor. The Volkswagen rotor is on a 5 by 100 uh, excuse me, a 5 by 112 and the Subaru is a 5 by 100 so I can't get the rotor off of the Volkswagen. So, um, the thoughts are maybe I'm going to have to see if I can have this turned down just a little bit. Um, or maybe see if uh, a different Subaru rotor, maybe uh, from a not performance car, is a little bit thinner. Um, or I could uh, try and actually wear my pads down or pull a set of used pads from somewhere uh, and see if those would uh, have less less pad on them and would allow me to uh, fit the caliper over it. But I think uh, the best thing to do is probably just take these down to the local uh, suspension place, uh, suspension shop, and see if they can turn that rotor. I, I don't need much. If I were to get a, uh, a 30 seconds up front and a 30 second on the back, it would fit. So... Uh, I think that's what I'm going to have to do. <laughs> this has turned into a lot bigger project than I thought it would be. Bolting a different set of calipers on. And we haven't even gotten into trying to control the electronic park, uh, the electronic parking brake. So, uh, more fun to come. I just looked at my camera roll. I've been working on videos for the rear brake for exactly a month now. And, um, uh, I'm finally there. I finally, this should be the last video. It's, it's finally mounted. Um, a lot of things had to get done to make these Volkswagen brakes fit on the Subaru. Um, some of it was my, my own fault by starting out down the wrong path, but uh, we're there now. So um, you can see here's the uh, Volkswagen Passat caliper. It's uh, right here so the brake line comes in. And here's where you bleed it, and then this is the motor for the electric parking brake hanging off the back there. So uh, it's an integrated electric parking brake and hydraulic normal brake, which is what I was going for. Um, it is mounted to the caliper bracket, which is this piece 
here, which was what I started off missing because uh, when I did the electric parking brakes for the Tesla, they didn't have a, a caliper that they slid in and out of, but, you know, looking back, I realize now that's because they didn't have a, uh, a hydraulic brake integrated with them. When you've got a hydraulic brake, you've got to have that caliper that they can slide in and out of. So, let's see if I can get this off here one-handed. Set the camera down for just a second and get that nut to break loose. There we go off and take a look at some of the other stuff that got done. Um, there we go. So I didn't really do anything to the actual caliper itself. The uh, wires right there, I got those out of the junkyard. Uh, they came off of a Passat. I got them when I went to get these out of the junkyard. The calipers are brand new. ordered them online. Um, Caliper brackets had to get worked on. Um, they're they're too thick to fit over this rotor. So um, this face here, these two faces, and the two on the bottom, I had to sand down uh, or file down. I'm more than sand, I had to take a file to them and slowly file them down. And then the same thing with these little brackets that hold the brake pads in. Um, I just had to file them down about a half a millimeter on each side to give myself about an extra millimeter so that they would uh, fit over the rotor without biting um, and locking it in place. And then once I had everything mounted and in place like this and I went to put that caliper on, it wouldn't fit because the, uh, the yellow stuff brake pads plus the Subaru rotor are a lot thicker, I guess, than the uh, the Passat rotor and pads. So uh, I actually had to take the brake pads and uh, I put some sandpaper on a glass table and just slowly sanded them down. You can see I took off basically most of the brake in. Uh, the yellow stuff come with a red stuff coating on top to help with brake in. So uh, they're not going to break in as well. I'll have to be careful breaking the rear brakes in. Uh, but I used a micrometer to make sure I sanded them evenly all the way around so they're still flat. They still make good contact. And then my brake backing plate that I made here. I hope I didn't flip this video upside down. It's this plate here. It mounts uh, to these two bolt holes on the... Um, spindle. The old Subaru mounted four. It had a big backing plate that went all the way around and didn't have a backing plate. So it mounts right there on these two. And then it's just an arc. I've got another one I'm working on over here. I'll show you. And uh, I'd initially welded nuts on the back, but um, I decided that that was unnecessary. And I'd originally mounted this whole thing. Uh, I took some measurements wrong and I mounted it too low. And so the the electric motor for the caliper was resting on this arm, so when I moved it, rotated it up, I just tapped the plate. Um, it's a quarter inch steel, and there's not a lot of pressure in and out. All the pressure is going to be this way, so it, it should be just fine. So I've got uh, another backing plate I'm working on over here. I'll show that to you real quick. It's for the other side. simple arc. I gotta clean it up obviously that got cut on the plasma cutter but two holes here to mount to the uh, spindle and then two holes here for the uh, brake caliper bracket to mount. So uh, all that's left to do now is uh, modify the caliper bracket here for the other side so, uh, which involves just filing down those four faces there. Um, and then I can hook them up hydraulically and bleed them and wire up power to the electric controllers. I'm going to use an Arduino to control them. Um, and I'm working on an Arduino for something else on the car. So since it's there, I'm going to throw the brakes on it as well. And uh, there we go. Integrated electric parking brakes. I have no parking brake cables or parking brake handle to worry about. It really cleans up 
uh, the, the interior of the car, not having to figure out where I'm going to put a big parking brake handle that you can pull on because it's a very small interior. If I were to have a parking brake handle, um, you know, as a possibility, I could fit it between the uh, linkage there, or I'd either have to eat into the space over there on that side for the passenger seat. Definitely uh, not enough room on this side, so I'm real happy not to have a parking brake handle.